here we're going to do a pretty exhaustive example of a surface integral. So there's a lot to learn from this single example or a lot to practice from this single example. So but before we get to it, let's uh, recall what the definition of the scalar surface integral is. So we've got s, which is smoothly parametrized by this vector function r u v, where u and v run in d, which is a region in the plane. And I should say that r is one to one on this region, so it's not double counting um, the surface. Then the scalar surface integral of f over s ds is equal to the double integral over d of f evaluated at this parametrized surface times the magnitude of the cross product of ru with rv and then da. So this is just a standard double integral on the right hand side from earlier in the class. But this thing on the left hand side is a whole new thing. It's a surface integral. Okay, so the goal is to find the surface integral of this function y plus z over the surface described with these three parts. So notice the top is the plane z equals 9 minus y, so I've called that s1. The side is the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 9. And then the bottom is the disk x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9. Okay, so, um, and I should say that this is happening in the xy plane. And so here's the picture. You can think about this cylinder goes up and down for all all z values, but it's capped on the bottom by this uh, surface S3, which is this disk in the plane, and then it's capped on the top by this slanty plane, which we're calling S1. So that looks like an ellipse on the top, so that's pretty interesting. Okay, so we're just going to tick these off one at a time. So we've got to parameterize each part, and then after parameterizing each part, we have to calculate the surface integral. So maybe uh, let's look at S1 first. Maybe we'll do S1 and S3 first and second, and then S2 last. So let's start off with our surface S1, because that's actually the nicest, because it is given by a function of z in terms of x and y, which means we can take our parameterization just to be built by that function. So we'll say r, um, maybe you think about a subscript one happening there because we're in S1, but I don't want to like overwrite all of our indices. So R of X, Y, so that's going to be X comma Y comma nine minus Y because that's the value of Z. Great. And now we need to think about uh, what our region is in the plane that uh, acts as the domain for this parameterization, but the region in the plane that acts for the domain is just whatever's directly below this uh, surface S1 or this ellipse, which is just this purple disk down here. Um, it's actually lucky that this domain is going to be the same thing as S3. That's happening kind of because of circumstance, not uh, because of something that happens all of the time. So this is going to be all x and y values where x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9. And then uh, let's maybe go ahead and calculate r sub x and r sub y. Notice r sub x is going to be 1, 0, uh, 0. And then r sub y is going to be 0, uh, 1, negative 1. Okay, and then we can also go ahead and calculate the magnitude of Rx cross Ry. And notice that that is going to be the magnitude of, so this cross product Ijk. So let's see, we'll have uh, uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1. So let's see, in the ith direction, we're going to get zero. In the jth direction, um, we are going to get a one. And then in the kth direction, we're also going to get a one. So this is going to be the magnitude of zero, one, one. So now we can start inserting this into the equation for the surface integral. So notice, uh, we'll just do the S1 part first. So the surface integral of S1 over uh, y plus z. So that'll be the double integral over this region in the plane d1. And then we have y plus z where we're using this parameterization. So it's y plus 9 minus y. That's just going to give us 9. 
And now we need times uh, this magnitude of this cross product, but we've calculated the cross product down there. It's not too hard to see that the magnitude is the square root of two. And now we need uh, dA. But now notice that we can write that as the integral as nine times the square root of two over the integral of d1 dA, which is just nine times the square root of two times the area of d1. I mean, we could do a lot of work in order to calculate that, or we could just use the fact that d1 is a circle of radius three, and we know what the area of a circle of radius three is. It's going to be nine pi. So we get a nine pi from this, because it's pi r squared. Um, so nine times nine uh, is 81 root two times pi. So that's what we get for this first surface integral. So let's go ahead and calculate, uh, keep that over here. So the integral over S1 of this thing is equal to uh, 81 times the square root of two times pi. Okay, so we'll keep that for later. Now let's go ahead and calculate the one over S3, but I'll clean up the board in order to do that. So we've calculated the surface integral over S1, where that's part of our total goal. Now let's do S3. So in order to parametrize S3, um, well, we can just really be inspired by polar coordinates here. So notice here we can take R um, of R theta. So I know this is kind of sloppy, but we have R as the name of the function, and then we're using R as one of the variables. But I think that's okay. We'll just be careful. And this is going to be r cosine theta, r sine theta, comma zero. Okay, so let's talk through that. So notice this zero right here makes sure that we're in the xy plane. And then this r cosine theta and r sine theta will give us any point in the xy plane. But we don't want any point. We want only the things within a circle of radius three, which means we can take r in the interval zero to three, and then pi over, sorry, and then theta in the inter interval zero to two pi. Now let's go ahead and calculate this component. So notice the partial of R with respect to R is going to be uh, cos theta uh, sine theta zero. And then the partial of R with respect to theta is going to be uh, minus R sine theta and then R cos theta and then zero. Now let's go ahead and take that cross product. So we're gonna have R, R cross R theta. So that is going to be, we have the ith component, the jth component, the kth component. In the kth component, we have both zeros. Now here we're gonna have cosine theta, sine theta, uh, minus R sine theta, and then R cosine theta for that. But uh, if we go ahead and take that cross product, notice we're going to get zero for the first two components. The only non-zero will be for the third component. So that's going to give us zero comma zero comma. Now we have cosine squared times r plus sine squared times r. In other words, we have r, which makes the magnitude of that r as well. So, but we'll get to that. So now we need to do the surface integral over S3 of F dS. So that's going to be the double integral over uh, D3, where D3 is defined by this rectangle right here, which we talked about uh, just a second ago. And now we have let's see, y plus z, so the y component of our parameterization plus the z component, so notice that's just going to be r sine theta. And then next, we're going to have the magnitude of this cross product, but we already noticed that the magnitude of that cross product is just gonna give us another r, so we can write that as r squared, and then we have dA. Now we can take this double integral and write it as an iterated integral, given that we know what this region is. So we'll have uh, 0 to 2 pi, uh, 0 to 3, and then we have r squared sine theta um, dr d theta. So the next thing that we can do is separate that into an r integral and a theta integral, given that it's a product of a function of r and a function of theta. So we have 0 to 2 pi sine theta uh, d theta uh, times uh, 0 to 3 r squared dr. 
Okay. But notice the antiderivative of sine is cosine, but also cosine has a period of two pi. So if you plug in two pi and zero, you get the same thing. So in other words, this thing is zero. So this whole value here is zero. So let's go ahead and collect that over here. This sur surface integral over S3 of F dS is just zero. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at the surface integral over the side, in other words, S2. So we've done the surface integrals over the top and the bottom, now let's work on the side. So for the side, we're going to be inspired by cylindrical coordinates, um, which let's recall that those are given by x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and then z equals z. But here we want to restrict ourselves to the shell of that cylinder. In other words, we need to restrict ourselves to just r equals 3 because we have a cylinder of radius 3. So what that tells us is that a nice choice for the parameterization, which will be in terms of theta and z, will be equal to 3 cos theta, 3 sine theta, and then z. So notice I just plugged r equals 3 in here. Okay, good. And now we need to figure out what our region is. So notice our region D will be given by ordered pairs theta comma Z and theta is going to be between 0 and 2 pi because notice we're drawing the whole uh, revolution of the cylinder. But then z is a bit tricky. Notice z goes from the bottom, the xy plane, which is the z equals zero plane, up to this plane right here, which was described by S1. But notice we have an equation for that plane. So notice that z goes from zero up to nine minus y, but our y value is given by this, so it'll be 9 minus 3 sine theta. Great. So we have uh, that kind of setup for our region. Now let's go ahead and calculate um, r theta and r z. Notice that r theta is going to be minus 3 sine theta, uh, 3 cosine theta, and then 0. And then r z is going to be 0 comma 0 comma 1. Okay, good. Now the next thing that we need to do is calculate r theta cross r z because that's what goes in here. So r theta cross r z. So we'll use the matrix determinant formula again. So notice under the ith component we have minus 3z, sorry, 3 sine theta, and then 0. Then we have 3 cos theta here and 0, 0 and 1 there. Now let's see what we get when we take that determinant. So for the first entry, we're going to get 3 cosine theta. So here we have 3 cos theta. And then for the second entry, we're going to have a negative of negative 3 sine theta. So in other words, 3 sine theta. And then for the third entry, which we get from crossing this and this, we'll have 0. But we don't really need that, we need the magnitude of this thing. So now if we take the magnitude of r theta cross r z, we'll have the square root of 9 cosine squared plus 9 sine squared. Um, so let's see, 9 cos squared plus 9 uh, sine squared. But that's going to be just the square root of 9, which is 3. Okay, so that's what we have for our r theta cross rz. Now I'll go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll calculate the rest of the surface integral. Now we want to calculate the surface integral over S2. So uh, notice that's going to be the double integral over this region D down here, which uh, we described earlier. And then it'll be the function evaluated at this surface. Notice this function is given by y plus z. So we need to add 3 sine theta and z. So we have 3 sine theta plus z. Good. And now we need to multiply that by this magnitude of this cross product, which we calculated before was 3. I'll put that out front. And then we need dA, because at this point, this is just a standard double integral. Now, using this way that we've written d, we can go ahead and write this thing as an iterated integral. So this is going to be 3 times the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 9 minus 3 
sine theta. So that's our z integral, which is the inner integral. And now we have three sine theta uh, plus z, and then we have dz d theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that uh, z integral first. So that's going to give us uh, 3, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, and then we're going to have 3z sine theta um, plus z squared over 2. We need to evaluate that from 0 to 9 minus 3 sine theta d theta. And now notice that these are z values right here. Great. Okay, so let's see what we get for that. That's going to be equal to 3, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of, so plugging in this top one in here is going to give us uh, 27 sine theta. And then, uh, let's see, minus 9 sine squared theta. Okay, that's what we get for distributing that. And then plugging it in here, that's going to be plus, um, well, I'll just write it out, 9 minus 3 sine theta quantity squared. And then plugging in 0, we obviously get 0, so that gives us that kind of setup. Okay, good. So I'll move that to the top, uh, clean up the board, and then we'll continue on. When we had left off, we had broken it down to this single integral. So now let's see what happens to that. So first of all, I want to get rid of this sine theta. Notice when we take the antiderivative, we get cosine. Its period is 0 to 2 pi. So this thing is just going to 0 out immediately. Then the next thing I want to do is go ahead and multiply that thing out. So here we're going to have 0 to 2 pi. Now if we multiply that out, we're going to have 81 minus, so 9 times 3 is uh, 27, but we're going to have two of them. So that's going to be 54 sine theta. And then next we're going to have plus 9 uh, sine squared theta. And then another minus 9 sine squared theta from that one, d theta. Now again, a bunch of stuff cancels, so notice this 9 sine squared and uh, minus 9 sine squared cancel, and then for the same reason as before, this is go going to go to zero. So again, sine and cosine have a period of 2 pi, so if you integrate over an entire period, you're going to get zero. So notice we get 3 times 81, that's 243 times the integral from zero to 2 pi d theta. So now, uh, go, putting that together, we're going to get 243 times uh, 2 pi. So what is that? Like 486. So we get 486 pi. Now, it's super likely that I messed that calculation up at the very end with the arithmetic, but I think you guys will be all right. But that's just the integral over S2. Uh, so that means uh, the final answer is going to be the value that we got over S1, the value we got over S2, and the value we got over S3 summed together. In other words, we have uh, 486 plus 81 times the square root of 2 times pi. Great, and that finishes this video.